Uh, boy, we are wound up this morning, aren't we, kids? <laughs> I know, everybody's so excited, happy to see each other. Uh, this is my favorite time of year. This is a time uh, where we get together as a family. We get so busy, such busy lives. And we just tell the Lord what we're thankful for. And I'm so thankful for all of you, for this church family. You all are such a blessing and such a big part of, I know, Michael and Mai's life and our family. So, um, anybody have any prayer requests or any testimonies they'd like to share this morning? Yeah, we're uh, Just a word of praise to God for, you know, being so good. I've been uh, undergoing diabetes treatment. Uh, because I got diagnosed about a month ago, and one of the things that the doctor wanted me to do was go to our cardiologist, which I did. And, uh, you know, sometimes doctors get so <coughs> wound up in their own profession that they cannot see farther from their nose. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't question their knowledge, because I admire their profession and all the things that they have to learn in order to be able to be good at it. But, you know, uh, our world is encompassing. We see everything, the whole picture. They only see, they have tunnel vision. Uh, so anyway, this guy wanted me to get a heart test to see if there were any calcium deposits around my heart. And then, so I got the test done and all that. And then on Thursday, I went to do a follow-up visit because he wanted to see me again. And uh, he was like, well, there was nothing on your test, which I already knew. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. And then he's like, well, so now we're going to do diet change. I'm already doing that. Really? Yeah. I'm already doing that since two days after I came to see you the first time. Well, that's good. Okay, so then we're going to do exercise. I'm already doing that. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> you, know, you told me to do these things and I'm doing them. Why are you so surprised? Uh, well, anyway, my blood pressure is back to normal. And I, when I went for the first time to the doctor, my average blood sugar uh, for the past three months had been 380. Uh, and the day that I went to the doctor, it was at 500. Well, since I started the treatment, it hasn't been over 200 since. The lowest, the lowest number that I've had, uh, when I when I check it after waking up, has been 100. So it's all good. I'm getting better. Uh, Kelly keeps saying, "I'm keeping you alive, honey." So I I. I'm very thankful for the wife that I have because she has been pretty much the key component into this whole change and, and how well I'm doing right now. Anyone else? Any testimonies? Uh, yeah, Tim. Um, to kind of go with the business, talking about doctors, um, I've been seeing a homeopathic doctor because over the years I've had symptoms that, you know, they treat you, medical doctors treat, give you a pill to lessen or cover up the symptom. I wanted to know what was wrong and fix that. Mm -hmm. And so I've been seeing a homeopathic doctor. And without going into too many details, she has this, I don't know what it's called. She has this device and she touches points on my hand and points on my feet. And it reminds me of a thing I had in high school, like a little Geiger counter. It's like a little thing that bounces back and forth. And based on the readings, she's able to determine things, which is bizarre in itself. But without me saying things to her, she has accurately described various things. So, I mean, she's made a believer out of it because time and time again, it has proven true. And so, she, I went, I guess a couple weeks ago, and she was just talking. I didn't know she was talking to my body. She was asking questions. And based on this reading, you know, it gave her an answer. And I looked at her and I said, you do one? And she said, your body knows what it means. 
And she said, what color are your eyes? She said, I'll show you something. And she looked at me and I said, they're hazel. And she said, okay, watch this. She touched a point and she said, your base is 50. And so anywhere she touched my body, this apparatus went to 50. And I said, okay. And she said, are your eyes brown? And she touched the two points and it went like off the charts. And she said, are your eyes blue? And they went off the charts. And she said, are your eyes hazel? They went to 50. And time and time again, she asked various questions that went there. And I started crying because God can use moments through your day mm -hmm. to talk to you. And so she said, what's the matter? And I said, do you understand what's happening? Mm -hmm. And she said, what do you mean? Because, you know, she's a doctor and she mm -hmm. serves lots of people, so she can't be spiritual and authentic. I mean, you know, they try to be sort of generic. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, so I said, do you get what's happening? And she said, tell me. And I said, well, I don't want to preach to you. I said, but this is a God thing. And she said, keep talking. <laughs> and I said, I said, and we all know, because our pastor has preached, that smaller than an atom is a quartz. Mm -hmm. Some of you might know because you know it. <laughs> but in the quartz, at the base of that is sound waves. Because God spoke this all into mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. She can hand me, like, if she thinks I need, um, if based on my symptoms or the reading on this thing, I need this, this, and this. She can hand me a box that it's in, and it brings it into alignment. And I said, do you understand what's going on? I said, all of creation, every single thing on this planet, in this universe, was spoke into existence. Mm -hmm. It all is interconnected. And by speaking, not just random things, but especially because we know what we know, when we speak in agreement with his word, mm -hmm. our every cell in our body hears it and responds. Yes. The walls, the trees, the grass, everything has right. to respond mm -hmm. because it's connected. Yeah. And when she was doing that, I mean, I'm just crying because I'm having such a God moment because it blows me away mm -hmm. how simple he created everything, mm -hmm. but yet how marvelous and unimaginable yes. it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Peter. Okay. Well, I'll try to, I don't know if I'll be able to make this brief or not, so is that okay? <laughs> so, um, back in August when Jamie and I went to Cincinnati for this business we're trying to start up, first of all, it was a one miracle of God is that we applied for and got accepted into this elite group to be mentored by this, this person that we really admire. So first of all, that was a miracle because she only accepts six people a year and <coughs> we were one of those people. Well, she had a mastermind meeting of, uh, last week in Cincinnati and, and I used up basically most of my PTO for this year so I didn't know how I was going to be able to do it. We don't have money really right now to fly. Um, both our vehicles are 15 plus years old, so we'd have to rent a car to go. And the hotel it was at was, was fairly expensive. So, I'll show you how God took care of all this. First of all, I didn't have, you know, I'm stepping out in faith saying we're gonna be there, we'll commit to be there. Didn't really have the, the time off to take to go there. So, I get this email from work and Roberto when I both work for Wells Fargo, that they're giving us two floating holidays for the year out of nowhere. So I get two more days off that were not unexpected. So God gives 275,000 people two additional days off just so that I can go to Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, Roberto. You're welcome. So that's the first thing. So the, the second thing, I'd already registered at the hotel where the mastermind group was at, but it was it's a pretty pricey hotel. Well, they usually require you to deposit the first night stay there, but this time they didn't. And a new hotel opened up that would save us... Um, I think it was $40 a night. So that door opened. So I was able to cancel one without any repercussions and stay at this new hotel. Then lastly, to actually go to this event we, we went to, there was this special deal where we were able to save $200 on that. So God saved money and created the time for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Anyone else? Any testimonies of prayer requests this morning? Yeah, James. Yeah. Um, as people know, I put up on the runway um, site. Um, my eyes were a little bit damaged, and I was 
I don't want to blame this, but I ask for prayer of all of you so this test doesn't, that this test comes out better than they expected. I ask uh, you to join me, like me, and love me, and that I'm concerned that something would happen. I don't want something to happen, but we want to catch this now before it can get worse. Amen. So, Amen. Sheila. So Evelyn wants to thank everyone for prayers. Uh, talking about doctors, she found this person that they sent her to that does massage therapy of some sort, which has been able to release some of the edema in her legs, which has given her comfort for the first time. She's been kind of pain-free, though she has malvated, so I thank the Lord. And she just says, thank everybody for praying because she's making strides forward. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, Tim. Yes. I want to thank the Lord for those uh, people that you meet and do in the course of the day. And I, I, I deal with the students and stuff. And since Thanksgiving come up, you know, uh, one individual was talking about how that it, it wasn't just a day for her, but just to be thankful all the time. And she shared about some tragedies that she had. But she said, you know, the Lord got me through and the Lord's getting through every day, and I'm going to praise the Lord every day and be thankful every day. And I, I just thought that was just a great attitude to have, because really how you start your day, you know, you start out with the Lord, and just spend those time, you know, I, I just always think it's good uh, to just let God know how much you appreciate Him every single day. Mm-hmm. Because there's nothing wrong with asking God for things, that, that's fine, but to take that uh, a moment of your day, maybe just to say thank you, Lord, for being there for me, you know, all the blessings that, I mean, we are blessed people, we, yeah. we think about it, you know, we, sometimes we, we look at the wrong side, but what I don't have, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that, instead of looking at what we do have, Amen. you know, because there's a lot of people may desire to be at church this morning, but they don't come for, for various other reasons, but you're here, you know, and, 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 you, and you got an opportunity to come and praise God for people. I just think that thankful heart just makes it makes things so much better. Yes. 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 Anyone else this morning? Yeah. Yeah, I want to uh, thank the Lord and the body of Christ for praying for me about a little over a week ago when I had this really bad pain that came in my hand and wrist and couldn't even hardly use it. Just felt like a truck ran over it. It was just like a dead pain. So I left work early and uh, asked Sheila to put out the prayer request in cyberspace that uh, <laughs> people would uh, pray for it. And the next morning it was okay. I just thank God for that. And that's what we should have is a uh, network yeah. of uh, contacting one another when we got a need, you know, because uh, this is God, you know, working between us and among us and through us, through him and right. through our prayers, uh, this is how it works. I just thank God that it's, uh, <coughs> that's the way it is, that God cares for us and he shows his love to us through each other. And, I mean, you can't do any better than that. Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. 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 Last call. All right, well, let's stand and go to the Lord this morning. So thankful, Lord. Thankful hearts, Lord, we come before you this morning. Lord, for every need that you have, Lord, for the healing that comes, Lord, for the wisdom that comes when we just listen. Lord, you created everything that we need, Lord. You created everything with a purpose, Lord, including every cell out of our body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
gather together, Lord, as we turn our eyes to you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That all of creation cries out. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that every tongue shall confess, every knee shall bow. The name of Jesus, Creator God, Redeemer of man, you are worthy of our praise, Lord. brought a phone this morning please silence it or turn it off till after the service and today we would invite everybody to stay after the service we have um, a meal downstairs there it smells so good down there already it's gonna be hard to make it through sunday school without getting the spoon out to a uh, taste test but i will refrain i will refrain i, I promise pastor I won't. and i won't double dip if i do <laughs> now please stay there's plenty of food for all yes yeah, done Seven crock pots. It's going to take all of us to eat it. <laughs> I have to take my brother to go to the bull clinic tomorrow. And he's having trouble with his eyes from diabetes. And uh, I talked to him the other day, and he sounded, he's always so upbeat. And, you know, so much faith in God. And he sounded, I, I detected just a little. And he's not old enough for Medicare yet, so they gave him a shot in one eye that was $2,500 out of his pocket. So now he said they called him because he wasn't going to go back. And I said, well, don't let it be money. Gosh, we'll find a way to come up with the money. And he said, no, 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 I'm going to trust the Lord. Well, they called him, and it hadn't gotten any better. So they, he said, I, I think maybe the Lord, you know, does want me to go back. Okay. So as we were praying, mm -hmm. I brought that up before the Lord mm -hmm. again about his eyes. And I'm telling you what, the Spirit of God just moved yes. through. Those eyes are going to be fine. Yes. 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 God is going to deliver him. Yes. And yes. I wanted to declare it before it happened. Yes. Because yes. That, the yes. Lord said, you know, Prophecy was one of the greatest gifts because when you tell somebody all about themselves that they never knew, like the woman at the well, yes. Yes. that they know yes. is Almighty God. Yes. Yes. So I declare it now, and I, I look forward to having them yes. not figuring out what's going on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, Toby and Don, you two want to come take an offering this morning? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Toby, you want to ask the blessing this morning, please? Lord, we're thankful to be here today, God. Be in your house, Lord. Be with your people. And to hear your words, God. Yes, Lord. Your ever faithful words. Yeah. Lord, we still sometimes marvel at what it can do. We just need to release it and watch what it does do, yes. God. Yes. For you have declared it, God. Not us, but you. Yes. But nothing in this world can even stop it, Lord. Yes. All we need to do is believe that it is you. And yes. it is faithful and true, God. We stand together in it and believe it each and every day. Now, Lord, we just ask that you bless this offering, God. Bless this gift and the giver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 All right, worship team. Glory. 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 All of this other shit.
Moses was standing there, and there was a burning bush there. Well, guess what happened on the day of Pentecost? That burning bush got put inside of you. Yes. Your presence is all I need. Well, guess what? I feel it, and I feel it, and I see the fire coming out of you.
Hallelujah. Let's lift him up right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. For He is great and His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Well, let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Hallelujah. The young people can be dismissed. Go downstairs. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Suzanne, for opening. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, everybody who shared the testimony or have given us the privilege to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. We are thankful. Amen for everything that God is doing. Praise the Lord. I want to thank Tim for uh, standing in for me last Wednesday. Amen. Amen. Did a great job, and I appreciate that very much. Taking the time to, to be here and represent the Lord. Amen. So, thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, coming up on Thanksgiving, praise the Lord, this Thursday. And, you know, it's amazing to me that unless we really understand what the Lord has done, I know we have our ideas of what Thanksgiving roots are, but the truth is, I'm thankful to the Lord. Amen. Yes. Because if it were not for the Lord, we wouldn't have anything. Not this nation, not ourselves, not certainly not any future uh, or any hope of, uh, That's right. of the Lord. So, yes. amen. He is our everything. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. And until we really understand how to be thankful to Him, all the rest of our thanks are kind of shallow. You know what I'm saying? So, Because we turn Christmas and Thanksgiving and all of these, uh, what should be awareness of God, kind of celebrations into secular kind of just uh, another way to spend money, praise the Lord, another way for uh, the old capital system to work, praise the Lord. Not that I'm against capitalism, but amen, our capital, hallelujah, is in heaven, hallelujah. And one of these days, that new capital, Jerusalem, new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven, hallelujah, amen. And then, then, hallelujah, everything will be Yes. the way it ought to be. Praise the Lord. Jesus. In the meantime, He's placed us here. He's, he's left us here yes. to make some inroads. Hallelujah. To try to, amen, bring heaven to earth. To right. produce, amen, on earth what God already has in heaven. Praise the Lord. And So I want to talk to you this morning about Thanksgiving in a little different way, but Thanksgiving to the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's, it's been great because that's what this theme of everything we've been doing in terms of worship and, and the testimonies and so forth. And and so I'm thankful. I'm, I'm really thankful. That song that uh, we sang where it talks about uh, I was, you know, going down for the last time. I can relate. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I was going, but, you know, there wasn't anybody that could save me. That's right. There wasn't somebody or something that could do it, but, but God did. Hallelujah. Yes. And He wants to do that for everybody. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I'm a child of the 60s, and I actually even remember some of it. Praise the Lord. But, uh, you know, I was into a lot of crazy stuff. And I, I remember I was thinking, you know, in the 60s, you didn't have to turn on to get high. Yeah. You just turn on the TV. I mean, think about it. We had a talking horse and a flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, that'll kind of set you off a little bit, you know, yeah. just thinking about it. Hallelujah. So, uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank God. Amen. That he saw us where we would be, not where we were. Hallelujah. He knew our end from our beginning. Hallelujah. And He has directed the steps of our feet. Hallelujah. Been a light to our path. Amen. And He's not finished. Praise the Lord. We're still involved. Amen. And still moving on in what God wants to do. And people are always saying, well, I don't, you know, who, who can tell me that nothing is impossible? I mean, you ever try to slam a revolving door? Yeah. Praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, nothing is impossible right. with God. Right. Nothing is impossible with God. He can do all things. Whatsoever thou canst believe, amen, all things 
will come to pass if we can believe it. Hallelujah. And I like what Tammy was talking about. Our words have power. He said, in yes. your words, from the, the, the power of your words, amen, are life and death. Out of the mouth we right. speak, right. amen, victory and defeat. Right. And we have to stay focused on that reality because yes. words have power. Yes. Amen. Especially when they're spoken in faith. Yes. Right. We say what God says when we speak in agreement with God. You can expect something's going to happen. Yes. Something right. is going to happen in agreement with this word. It may not happen in a split second, but it will happen if you'll continue to stay in agreement, amen, with God and with what God has said, amen. So let's, uh, let's give thanks, hallelujah, amen, and, and we'll just begin do, by doing this uh, with uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, praise the Lord. And I'll try to be brief so that there's no mutiny, because... <laughs> In case you have your spoon in your pocket waiting, amen, to dip. Hallelujah. I want to get you down there because I'm a little selfish. And I want to get down there too, praise the Lord. I can smell it from here, praise God. So much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Praise the Lord. All right, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. So we've been justified by his blood. Not only that, we've been saved from the wrath, hallelujah, from the wrath or the judgment, amen, of sin, praise God, or for sin. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Yes. So just to begin with, it's simple enough, and everybody knows this, but I'll just repeat myself. Uh, anyway, in the New Covenant... It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Yes. He wants us to have the kingdom. This isn't something, you know, that we're trying to twist his arm to get. Amen. It's not earned. It's a free gift. It's yes. freely given. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Look at, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30 real quick here. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Now look at this. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Not anything we did. He gave us Christ. He puts us in Christ and Christ in us. Amen. So, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who, Jesus, who of God is made unto us right, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That's something we ought to be thankful for right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you believe, when you were born again, you came into Christ, Christ came into you. Now you are of Christ. You're no longer yourself. You've been purchased with a Christ. You are a new creature, a new creation in Christ. You are now of Christ. And because of that, you are wisdom. Yes. You are righteous. Yes. You are sanctified. And you are yes. redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. See, anybody who's been born again has, he, has already entered into the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. We've been entered, we have entered into the kingdom by virtue of this new birth. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, we have the indwelling spirit of God. And no one under the old covenant had this indwelling. God would come and move on them, but he never dwelt with them. He was never in them. Right. Amen. Remember uh, what Mike was talking about. Moses said, hey, if you're not going, I'm not going. Yeah. And God said, I will be with you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Fear not. I will be with you. That was the best Moses could hope for. Yeah. Yeah. But he told us. I'll be in you. Yes. Yes. Amen. He is in us. He and I are one. There was always a separation when God was with them. But with us, there is no separation. We are the wisdom. We are the sanctified. We are the righteous. We are the redeemed. Amen. Because God dwells in us. God will not dwell in a sinful vessel. Amen. If you don't think you're pure and, and, and perfect and righteous and holy, then you better get to thinking again because otherwise God could not dwell in you. Right. Yes. right. Amen. Praise the Lord. But because of Jesus, He has cleansed us of all unrighteousness, our sins and iniquities He remembers no more. Hallelujah. We are now one with God yes. of Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. 
See, these under the old covenant, they hadn't been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. We have been. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear yes. son. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They hadn't been saved. They hadn't been saved from the wrath to come because we see them suffering wrath throughout the Old Covenant. Why? Because they failed all the time. And judgment had to come, which was the reason why the law came. So that there would be some means of them knowing what was wrong and what was right, but also a means by which they could protect themselves from that failure, from that inability to keep the law. Amen? See... Uh, Adam had a, you know, you, you say, well, Adam had a perfect set, set up there. He only had one thing to avoid. And that was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He couldn't do that. He couldn't even do that. Just one thing. And what's so crazy is when the Jews received the law, they said, well, we can do all this. Yeah. Not only did they think they could do that, but then they added a, uh, several hundred other laws, yeah. amen, that were man-made yeah. that put them under greater condemnation and greater sin. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We've been redeemed from the law. Hallelujah. We are new creatures. We have a whole new, amen, relationship and reality in God. Let's look at Matthew chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. So from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied up until John. What did they prophesy? They prophesied the kingdom, yeah. that the kingdom was going to come. And the only way they thought there was a possibility for them to get in was by, by violence, by doing something really dramatic, amen, might get you into the kingdom. Well, it wouldn't, but that's what, that was their hope. That was what the law, amen, established in their minds. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So... All the prophets and the law, all the way back, from John all the way back to the first prophet, amen, they were prophesying a coming kingdom. And they're, in their mind, the only way into this thing was to force your way in, was to, was to by violently take this thing, amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, they prophesied the kingdom of God, but they couldn't get into it, amen? We aren't under an external code that is written on tablets of stones, but we have an internal indwelling Holy Spirit, amen, who has declared us righteous without us doing a thing except believing, amen, in He that is righteous. Yes. And the one who did keep the law, amen. We have escaped, because of that, we have escaped the wrath, not only the wrath then, but the wrath to come. Yes. Praise the Lord. There will be a judgment someday, praise the Lord, on all those who refuse to receive, amen, their means of escape. Yep. Their way out, amen, of judgment, which is Jesus himself. Yes. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Praise the Lord. Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Yes. Rain, that, that's, that's, that's more than just existing. That's more than just eking out a way. Yes. That's raining. That means we got, we're in charge. We're ruling, amen. Yes. And we rule the way kings have always ruled, and that's with our edicts, with our words. Praise the Lord. Whatever the king says, it's a law. If it wasn't a law before we said it, it's a law after we said it. Praise the Lord. Yes. As long as it's in agreement with God, whatever we say has to be. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's, it becomes the reality. Look. We are in, you know, the wrath. There was a time when God's wrath was poured out. Why? Because of, we know, uh, the Tower of Babel and all that was, and all, there was nothing but evil everywhere. I mean, uh, turn on the news, <laughs> praise the Lord. And I mean, we're just, it seems like we're right there, you know. We just got more information, but the junk is the same. I mean, the, just the mess. Praise the Lord. But here's the good news. We are in the ark called Christ. We are baptized into Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. We have left the old world. Praise the Lord. We have been translated into a new 
new creation, a new kingdom, a new world, amen, a new kingdom in Christ, hallelujah. And now the abiding, the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, the dove, amen, is with us and in us forever. He found a new world, amen. Remember he sent the, the, the dove out of the ark and, the, and the first, uh, first there was a raven, the raven didn't ever come back because he had dead stuff to hang around. You know, he could just float right over, you know, eat off the, the dead carcasses that were floating around the water. The dove went out and he came back the first time because there wasn't anything there. Second time he comes back with a with a uh, fig leaf or a, 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 sp a sprig of new life in his mouth, yes. and then he goes and doesn't return. Yes. Amen. Because there's a new world. There's yes. a new new life. A new kingdom has been born. Amen. And we have that dove, that dove that searches for the new kingdom. Hallelujah. That looks for the new land. Hallelujah. Yes. When released from the ark of Christ and then released out into this new creation. Praise the Lord. Us. Hallelujah. We are not just in the new creation. We are the new creation. Praise the Lord. So right now, we are citizens of the kingdom of God with access to all that the kingdom has to offer. Yes. Amen. We don't have to violently take it. No. Praise the Lord. We flow out of rest. Amen. Out of the finished work. Amen. Out of the perpetual Sabbath. Yes. Who is our Savior? Who is Christ Jesus? Amen. The Lord. It's not by works, he said, lest any man should boast. Look at Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Man, I don't, you know, this is good news. Yes. And we don't realize how good the news is and how thankful we should be to realize there's nothing we have to do. No. We just believe it. It's already done for us. We just receive it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. Don't kid yourself. God is not mocked. Because whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That used to scare me. Yeah. Seriously, that, that, was, a, that was not a, a friendly scripture to me. No. But I'm telling you, I've learned a few things. Hallelujah. He that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit life everlasting. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. The first man, Adam, sowed to the flesh. But the second man, the Lord from heaven, he sowed to the Spirit. And now... We are in Christ. Remember, we are of Christ. We reap, hallelujah, the benefits of life everlasting. We now reap the benefits, and that's just not long time, amen, that's God life. Yes. We reap God life, amen, when before we were suffering, amen, with man's death, yes. with corruption, hallelujah. But because we have believed, amen, now we, he sowed. And we were under that original sowing, and so we were reaping a harvest that was just death and dying and, and destruction and so forth. But Jesus came and sowed to the Spirit, amen, and now we reap life everlasting. Now we reap God life, amen, in us, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing can be impossible if I and God are one. I mean, come on. God's there. It's Him. It's, it's, it's not me anymore. It's what God does. It's what God is capable of doing if I will just agree with Him, if I'll just believe Him. Amen. Amen. He took my sickness so that I can have health. His health. Yes. Praise the Lord. He took my death so that I can have His life. Yes. God life. Praise the Lord. He became poor so that I can be rich. Yes. Hallelujah. He was chastised so that I can have peace. Yes. Amen. He took my grief so that I could be comforted. Yes. So that I could find comfort in the Lord. Even when it looks like a mess, when, it, when I should be grieving. Amen. I don't grieve like those who have no hope. Praise the Lord. I look to the Lord. I believe, amen, that He can comfort me, that He will comfort me. Yes. Isaiah 53 and verse 11. Oh, I'm telling you, Thanksgiving is way more than turkey. Yeah. Although I like turkey. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Yes. Praise the Lord. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Hallelujah. What this second man sowed, we will surely reap. Yes. Praise the Lord. He sowed. Yes. We have to reap. Yes. God, don't deceive yourself. God is not mine. Whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. Church, we've got life everlasting to reap. We've got all of the success and all the benefits of what Jesus did. That is our inheritance. That is what we reap. 
Anything other than that's a lie. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Man, we ought to be the most positive people. We ought to be the most upbeat. We ought to be the most excited about tomorrow no matter what today is. Hallelujah. God's in our tomorrow. He's, it's always going to be now with us. It's always going to be God with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me repeat this now. Casting down imaginations. I don't know about anybody else. But I wake up in the middle of the night all the time. And I got imaginations, man. I mean, stuff will come to me that is just so bizarre. I'm not talking about, you know, talking uh, horses and flying squirrels. I'm talking about negative stuff that might happen to my family or to my children or grandchildren or myself or my wife or whatever, you know. Just bad stuff that might happen. It's the enemy, but it's still there. It, it comes to us. And he's just casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Now, if I know what I've been talking about, if I, that's what I have to do is immediately remind myself of that because that's how I cast it down. I just replace it with the, the truth of what God has done and what God is doing in my life, and that will push that out of there. You can't have two thoughts at the same time unless you're schizophrenic. Praise the Lord. I've been accused of that, but it's not true. Praise the Lord. You know, you're not paranoid if you know they're out to get you. Praise God. So, down, passing down the man and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Against what God has done. Against the reality of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to what? To the obedience of Christ. Not to my obedience because I'll fail. I'll, I'll disobey. I'll do something wrong. But to His obedience because that has been appropriated. That has been given to me. I am of Christ. His obedience is what God sees in me now. Praise the Lord. So no harm, no evil will come to me. No. Praise the Lord. It may look like it, but it cannot prevail. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So here he, sa he says, casting down imaginations and bring into captivity every thought. Now, I used to think about that like, so is this about my thought life? And so I need to check every thought. Amen. Like, you know, what was that? Why did I think that? Yeah. You know, why did I think this? What, what, what's going on? I know, why, why am I thinking this way? Amen? That wasn't a good thought. I'm going to cast it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He isn't talking about each individual thought here. But we have allowed our imagination and our thoughts to be captivated by Adam's disobedience, yeah. yes. by what Adam did, yes. amen, yes. thinking that, okay, that's yes. me, you know, I mean, that's what I'm going to get, yes. instead of what, or focusing on what the obedience of Christ produced. Yes. So what the enemy does is try to come and get us to focus on what Adam's disobedience produced, right. bad stuff's going to happen. So I'm trying to deal with these individual thoughts, and, you know, you're struggling and you're just, you know, it's almost worse because you're just every time you come from one you got another where what he's really saying here is we just replace that one reality or what was once a reality with the true reality instead of being captivated by Adam's disobedience and what that produced we focus on what the obedience of Christ produced yes. Yes. everlasting life God life blessing yes. amen yes. increase all that God wants for us hallelujah Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 2, or 10, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Now, I got a body here, but this is not me. Not the real me. It's just the vehicle. It's just the body that I have. But the real me is inside here. It's the spirit. That's what's been made brand new. That's what is the, of Christ, after Christ. Amen. And so, though we walk in this flesh, we don't war after the flesh. So we're we're, we're in a new we're we're in a new kingdom. Yes. And the problem is, too many times we're trying to do warfare like we were still in the old kingdom, right. where it is swords and 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 you know rockets and guns and whatever you can come up with. That isn't how we do warfare. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not man-made. Right. Amen. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. So our, our only real fight under this new covenant is the fight of faith. Yeah. It's to believe. Yeah. Believe what God has said. Yeah. Amen. It's the fight to believe what Jesus did was enough. Yes. Yeah. 
There's nothing more you can do to add to it. Praise the Lord. See, strongholds aren't necessarily demonic powers. But they're principles. Amen. And those principles then become principalities or parts of our belief system. The way we look at everything, the way we... That's why you got to have your mind renewed because your mind wants to operate under those old principles. Yep. And when you do that, you establish principalities, amen, or, or ways of thinking about things, ways of, of operating, amen, a belief system in itself. So when we bring our thoughts into captivity to what the obedience of Christ produced, yes. it casts down every stronghold and every imagination that lifts itself yes. against what God already knows to be true and has placed it in us. Yes. I'll write my law in their heart. I'll write my word in their heart. The principles. Right. You, know, you don't have to have you know, the entire Bible downloaded into your system. You know by the Spirit the principles of what this word is about. You may not be able to quote the Scripture, but you've done it before. You've been talking to somebody in the Scripture. The, you know, the, the verse and chapter just didn't come to you, but you said exactly what's in agreement with that because that's a principle. That's a belief system that we have that was downloaded into us when we were born again. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's where we operate from. Hallelujah. What we know to be true. Yes. Praise God. All right. Romans chapter 5. Verses 18 through 21. Romans 5, 18 through 21. Praise God. Yes. See, and the good thing about that is even we didn't have to do that. It was put there. It was just placed in us. That's why you can talk to an unbeliever, a, a, a heathen, a, 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 an atheist, whatever, and you'll talk about things that you just, it's settled in you, and you think, like, what in the world is wrong with them that they can't figure this out, that they don't right. get it? Right. And at the same time, they're thinking, what planet did this clown come from? Because he's not making any sense whatsoever. We're talking two different languages because we're from two different kingdoms, from two different countries. Hallelujah. And to us, it's already in us to know these things. That's our belief system. We just speak out of that reality. And it seems perfectly logical to us because we have the evidence. We have the truth. But they're operating under different principles. So there are different principalities. Hallelujah. And they're subject to those things because they actually believe it, whether it's true or not. Right, yeah. It's a belief system. Yes. And you can't tell. Atheists are believers. They're just believers in something other than God. They believe in themselves. They believe in their own ability. They believe in, in, the, in, you know, in the economic system or in the government that they're under. And all the, not that all those things are bad. It's just that they're putting all their confidence in that instead of in God. Right. Praise the Lord. So therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men under justification. They just have to believe it. Yes. Amen. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Say yes. praise the Lord. That, that'd be us. Hallelujah. Amen. So here's what happened. Too often, our thoughts have been brought into captivity, again, to the disobedience of Adam. And the result is warfare. Turmoil. Yep. Fear. Yep. Death, yeah. anger, mm -hmm. all the things that you would think would be a part of any war, of any warfare, praise the Lord. Right. And see, we, we, if we understand what we're operating under, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We can be calm in the midst of the battle. When everybody else is losing their head and, and you know, cutting their own throat and going nuts, shooting themselves and everything else, we can relax right. and know that we have the victory. Yes. Praise the Lord. We are more than conquerors. Yes. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. See, the wages of Adam's sin was death. Right. But the gift of God, yes. as the result of Christ's obedience, is everlasting life. God life in us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Romans 12 and verse 2. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove mm -hmm. what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we do that? By our conscious awareness of God's presence in us. Mm -hmm. That it is finished. That we're not trying to finish it. It's already yeah. been finished. Yeah. Hallelujah. Be, don't be conformed to this world that's struggling to get all this and do and be and so on and so forth. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the only way you can prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's me. That's me just believing. Yeah. 
That's what he paid this dramatic, huge, inestimable price yes. for me to have. Yes. So that has to be good. It has to be acceptable or he wouldn't have done it. And it's perfect because it's God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Regardless of how I might look at it and see, you know, how, I don't know how this can work. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's perfect. Yes. Yes. It's good. Amen. It's acceptable. Right. Praise God. Amen. See, we'll never really be transformed by the renewing of our minds by memorizing Scripture. Not, I'm not against memorizing Scripture. I mean, it's good. Read the Bible. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to be transformed by just memorizing Scripture or some other religious exercise. Mm -hmm. But by bringing every thought into yep. the captivity to what Christ's obedience yes. produced. Yes. Yes. That's the key. Yes. Because we know theologians, and you can go to Drake, you can go to Iowa City and take theology classes. Yep. And they can give you all kinds of information. But for the most part, they have no real relationship with God. So they cannot give you what you really need. And that is the presence of God. Yes. That's faith. Right. They can give you information, but they might as well be teaching you a math class. Yep. Yep. For all the good that it will do you spiritually. Right. See, we reap what he sowed. Yes. That's not logical, but that's the reality. Yes. We reap what He sowed. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Let me show you something. Genesis 3, verse 9. I don't know about out there, but it's warming up up here. Praise the Lord. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? You know, that is the first question in the Old Testament. First question. You want to know what the first question in the New Testament is? Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. Where is he that's born king of the Jews? See, an all-knowing, all-seeing, omnipotent God wasn't playing hide-and-seek with Adam. God knew where Adam was physically located. He was looking for his own image and likeness in a man. And it wasn't there anymore. It had been there. He'd walk with him. He was with him all the time, right? He didn't see it again until Bethlehem. When the king of the Jews was born. Praise the Lord. And church, that's what we have received. His likeness. His image in a human being. Yes. And when God looks at us and asks, where are we? He's not asking, you know, what state are you in? What county? What town? What mental condition? He's asking where He is. Yes. Are you aware that I'm there? Because I'm looking for you. Amen. I'm looking for my image in man. That's what God has given us. That's what Jesus, we are of Christ. We are the image of God in flesh. We are the children of God, the brothers of Christ. Amen? You know, on the morning of the sixth day, God says, uh, He created man. Right? What He did was He created something, what God would look like if He were visible. Amen? Make man in, in our image, after our likeness. Let him have dominion. Let him be God in the earth. Yes. God has all dominion, but He gave it to us. He just looks for His image. Yes. And if we're aware of the image, then we have dominion. Yes. We operate in that authority, in that power. Yes. See, Adam didn't believe he had it. Yeah. Nope. Even though God told him he had it, yeah. that otherwise they wouldn't have eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They thought it was going to make them like God. Yep. They were created in the image of God. Yep. See, that's what religion does. It tries to get us to do stuff to make us more like God. When How can you do that when we've already been made in His image? We were born again. We have His DNA in us. Now, we have God DNA. We have God life in us. So there's nothing wrong with, you know, with religion as such, except that when we try to use it as a substitute for what God has already done. Then we make ourselves like Adam, trying to find out what is all the good stuff I need to do, and then I'll be like God. 
you can't do enough good stuff. The, the religion cannot give you enough rules and regulations and good things to do that will make you like God. It will just make you more aware of how unlike God you are. That's why we have to have our minds renewed, amen, to what God has said. To what God says is true. The Word of God. Praise the Lord. God and man have come together. And that happens wherever people believe in the obedience of Christ. Yes. God's image is made visible. Yes. That's what being born again really is. Yes. It's giving God access again yep. to another part of this kingdom. Yep. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. I mean, it's just it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. The more you think about it, the more impossible it seems. Mm -hmm. That a God, the Almighty, the, the, the self-existent One, the One who created everything, yeah. says, you are important enough for me that I'll die in your place so that I can have access to you and your life. I'll give you my life if I can just get into your life. I mean, what? That's just incredible. It is. In the dispensation of the fullness of time, she might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. So it isn't just about people that have already died and gone on to heaven. No. It's about the people right here. Yes. People that are still here. It's people that will be born in our future. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the living God comes into us, and that divine connection is made, and we become the revelation of God in the earth. With authority, yes. with inheritance, yes. with power. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. It's not enough that we get God. We get all His attributes. We get all of His benefits. Yes. Because He took all of our need, all of our lack, all of our inability and gave us all of His yes. ability in exchange. Yes. Praise the Lord. Last scripture and we'll wrap this up. Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 10 through 13. Matthew 6, 10 through 13. Jesus, now, this is a prayer that was prayed. Now remember when Jesus prayed this, it was still Old Covenant. He hadn't died. He hadn't been resurrection, right. resurrected. Amen. So this was, a, this was a prayer for what He wanted us to experience. What God wanted us to have. What we could only have one way, and that is if He went to the cross. So this is past tense for us, but it was, it was future for them when they prayed it, obviously, or they wouldn't have been praying. Yeah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That was their prayer. Now, we have the reality of this, church. Yeah. That prayer has been answered in Jesus. Yeah. So give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts and we'll, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And ever. Amen. Yes. That prayer was answered in Jesus. And so this morning I'm just saying thank you, Father. Yes. For your kingdom. Yes. For your power. Yes. And for your glory. Yes. Praise God. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us his kingdom yes. with authority and with dominion. Yes. So we reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And we give thanks. A continuous Eternal thanksgiving is what we have yes. in Jesus. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. And so with that in mind, let me just say thank you, Father, for the food that we're about to receive. It all has come from you. Part of your abundant grace and giving for all of us. Let it nourish our bodies as you nourish our spirits. Lord, for that we will be grateful. Amen. And for eternity, we'll say thank you, Lord. Jesus. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. Have a great meal. Hope you can stay. Uh, amen. And, and uh, just hang out for a little while. And have some soup. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You're dismissed. In Jesus' name. Yeah.